Good morning, good morning, good morning. Buenos dias, mi gente. Yo, yo. Welcome to Daily Discipline number 453. My name's Rob Hoback. Happy that you're here. Honored and humbled that you keep coming back like for reals. Hey, it is a Sunday fun day. It's a work day. It's an NFL. There are two playoff games today. My Green Bay Packers are playing. It could possibly be their last game of the year. I don't think so, but it could be, right? So we got a big day today. And uh, regardless, we got other things to do. So it's time to get to work. Let's do this. First things first, I'm still the realist. I am a fan. A fan. I'm a cheerleader, right? Like, I love this stuff. I love sports. I love all of it. And there were so many great things that happened yesterday, right? So my 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 first things first and my thank yous and my thought of the day, be a cheerleader, are all encompassed in one, right? So let's start with the Tennessee Titans. The Tennessee Titans went into Baltimore, which was the dominant team all year long, and kicked their ass from the very beginning. It was amazing, right? And so a lot of people were surprised. I wasn't surprised. Anybody was asking me, like, hey, what's your pick for the week? I'm like, take the Titans plus 10. There's no way they're going to lose that game by more than 10. I just don't see it happening, right? And uh, this time I was right. Sometimes I'm right. Sometimes I'm not. But that, that was awesome. And then, uh, you know, you – I talk about being a fan, being a cheerleader. The coach of the Tennessee Titans, man, I love that guy. I got a man crush on him, right? Like Mike Vrabel is badass. He was badass when he was in high school. That's why he earned a uh, scholarship to play at the Ohio State University for Urban Meyer. He was a badass when Bill Cowher, who just got elected into the Pro Football Hall of Fame yesterday live on television, which was amazing. That guy picked him, and he played for him for four years. He was a badass when he then got picked up by the Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots where he played for, you know, I don't know how many years he played there. He was a badass when he came to, to Kansas City. And I remember my boy Newt telling me all these stories about how everybody loved Mike Vrabel because he was at the gym and he was awesome. He was all crazy and he was this and he was that. And now look at him, right? Now look at him. And the reason that nobody – was really talking about him all year long. They finished nine and seven, and they had a quarterback problem. They had drafted Marcus Mariota, who was a Heisman caliber quarterback out of college. And look, by all accounts, he's a wonderful guy, and he's a he's a great human being. But he's not a, a, as great as he was in college. Didn't translate to the NFL, and so they still don't have a great quarterback. They got Ryan Tannehill, right? Which they, they showed a stat last night. He's the only quarter or the Tennessee Titans are the only team ever in the history of the NFL to have two games back to back where they won in the playoff and their quarterback threw for less than 100 yards. So how'd they win? They handed the ball to number 22, who did win a Heisman Trophy in college, who also won a national championship in college for Mr. Nick Saban and Alabama Crimson Titan. He was dominant then. He's been dominant ever since, but nobody talks about it because they haven't had a quarterback to round that thing out. So here's another storyline. I'm telling you, don't sleep on this one. Tom Brady deciding in the offseason he's out and going to play in a couple seasons for his former teammate, Mike Vrabel, down in Nashville, Tennessee. That would be amazing. That just, I, I get giddy just thinking about that. Anyway, so you got this badass coach. You got this badass. There's all kinds of badasses on that team. They're just tough. Love it. That just made me happy. And I like the Ravens, right? Like, I love their coach. I love a lot of stuff about what they do. But I just loved watching a team that, no, there was 53 guys in that locker room said, I don't care what anybody else says, we can beat them. We can beat them. And they went out and did it. It's unbelievable. God, that just gives me the chills, right? It gave me the chills when there's this dude, his name's David something. Big, big fella, right? And uh, NFL Films does a great job of recording him because what they do is like all of the finalists for the Hall of Fame, they bring him to a hotel. And then if he comes and knocks on your door, they, they do a great job of having the camera behind him. And people open that door and grown men just weep because that's it. That That's their defining moment. They're like, I worked my entire life since I was in second grade, third grade, fifth grade, whenever it was. And I fell in love with football and said, I want to go. I want to be a football player and I want to go to the Hall of Fame. And there he is. And when they see him, they know that's why he's there. Well, they did it yesterday at halftime. They had him show up to talk to Bill Cowher, and you could just see him holding back that emotion. I was like, man, that was awesome. Thank you. Um, yeah, 
And so here's my last thank you, right? Um, part of being the cheerleader is that yesterday, you know, we got some snow up here, right? And so my bro was supposed to have a tournament over in Miami, Oklahoma, which is 60 miles or an hour and a half in the car. And so we were talking about it. And so, you know, as much as I give bro a hard time for being selfish, he's a sweet kid. Um, and he's concerned about his family. He's like, dad, I don't want you to have to drive all the way over there with all of us. And, you know, you can just stay here. Well, I thought about that literally for like a nanosecond. I'm like, F that there. Ain't, no, 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 no. I, you're not going to be competing and I'm not going to be there watching it. And they're coming with us. Right. Me and Jack and Addy, like we'll make a car trip out of it. We'll stay in the hotel. We're going to have fun. So we get all packed up. We're all ready to go. We hop in the car, we drive an hour, and then everybody falls asleep. And I'm like, man, I need some caffeine, right, for this last half hour. Plus, that's just the last half hour of the drive. Then you got to check into a hotel, get everybody, to the, you know, like there, there was still a lot of work left. So I pulled over at a McDonald's. Miraculously, everybody woke up and then and gave me their order. And as I'm waiting in line, going through my messages, like, holy cow, the tournament's been canceled. So we, we spent all that time and energy and Sam thought I was going to be mad. I was like, not mad at all. I'm like, bro, this is just like, we got an extra car ride out of this. This is all we got. So we got our stuff, turned around, came home. And that home trip home seemed like it was like 20 minutes. And we had fun and we're singing along to Sesame Street and C is for Cookie and, you know, Elmo and, you know, It Ain't Easy Being Green by Kermit the Frog. But we also listened to some country music songs because my phone was dying and the only channel I got was a country music channel. And so there's this song that I keep hearing. It's by the band called Eli Young Band. And I believe the song's called Love Ain't. And it's talking about, it, it, it sounds like the writer was writing it to somebody saying, hey, the way you're talking about that person that, that you claim to love or that you say that you're in love with or in a loving relationship, all the things you're saying, that ain't love, right? That's toxic, right? And so... uh yeah, so I mean, and I'm like, man, last night I got home and I kept telling myself, like, there's like a couple songs on here that I heard and I want to check out the videos because, you know, there's always the downtime between the games and stuff. And so uh, I checked it out last night. Here's what I'm going to tell you. If you don't know that song, you might want to check it out. It's a good song. I'll even put the link in here below. But here's that thing. If you're going to watch the video, you better bring some tissues. That one's going to make you cry, right? But it's great. It's totally worth it. So with that, I'm done for the day. I'm picking the Chiefs and I'm picking the Packers to advance. Hopefully, I, you know, I got another, at least another week of this stuff in me, right? Um, if not, I'm thankful that we got this far. So, hands up. Oh, by the way, Matt LaFleur, coach of the Green Bay Packers, was an assistant coach for the, the Titans. Worked for Mike Vrabel, right? Huh? How about that? I'm so fired up. I love it. Anyway, hands up. Peace out. We're better together. Appreciate you stopping by on a Sunday fun day. Go get you some. We'll see you tomorrow on a manic Monday. Deuces.